Hello and welcome to the PPD YouTube channel folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. It's great to see you again and we hope that you've had a fantastic week and you're ready for another Twinkle Tip Friday edition. And here we are. This week I want to talk about submodels and not just uh, not just how to do submodels but the anatomy of a submodel and why it's important to begin understanding how they're created and how they work because if you understand this then you'll be able to understand hopefully what many of the sequencers are doing in their sequences so when you map your sequences over you'll know exactly what you need to do stay tuned let's get started all right guys let's go ahead and get started but before we do don't forget to hit the like button hit the subscribe button and share the video with folks who are working on learning more about x lights it may help them in their journey just as it might be helping you guys and don't forget the comment section down below if you have questions about how to do things if you're looking for something very specific if you are having uh, uh, getting getting stressed out because you can't find something then just let us know in the comments we might be able to produce another video or share with you the information that you need to get you going let's get started now with the uh, matrix here and I want to show you the basics of the anatomy of a submodel now I might have said this in other videos in fact if you watch the video that we did a couple weeks ago on creating any submodel inside a matrix or a megatree model watch that video it's really interesting you'll learn more about submodels if that's what you're interested it in but I want to do like that I, I want to dissect a submodel and I want to share with you what happens whenever you per default put an effect on them and how they should be reacting let's go in and enter into our dialog box here for the submodels and let's go into uh, add we'll click add and we'll do a test okay and now here's the thing you can create a submodel by just drawing on pixels over here. Uh, you can draw on pixels here, you can draw on pixels over here, and you can draw on pixels over there. Now, whenever, whenever you're thinking about how the effect is going to render off of this, you're thinking that, oh, this is just one big submodel and the effect should just go across it a certain way but it doesn't and it's all because of the buffer and how Xlight sees this model so what I'll do is I'll click OK I'll save it and we'll go into the sequencer and then I'm gonna go into the individual um, in individual submodel we'll bring the single strand effect down here and I'll stretch it out and now default the default watch what happens I thought it was going to go from left to right over the whole group but it's actually left to right it's going over all of the individual pixels that we selected as a group it's not saying it's not drawing a box around the whole uh, set of pixels it's going individually across all of them and it's going in the selection order or an order that X slice deemed was appropriate so how can we fix this if you had created a model uh, or a submodel rather and you wanted it to display like it was a regular Coro prop in your display will say this is how you would fix it okay so again the anatomy going in and what we can do is we can select this submodel and we can go to this buffer style and change it to keep XY and when we do we click OK and we save this and we go into the sequencer tab here now you can see it's traveling from the left side of this of the screen and it's traveling to the right side and that's exactly what you would expect it to be doing I'll speed it up here so you can see it a little better and we'll add another cycle to it there we go so you see it traveling left to right and as it travels left to right it just it looks like what the single strand effect would be doing now if you wanted to look at this a little differently maybe we put the bars on here and bars up you could see bars up we'll add a couple re palettes there or a, cu a couple repeats there we go so you can see a couple different sets of bars going from the bottom to the top and that's just the way that it's going to work but if you don't change that keep XY and set this up as that what we can do is we here I'll show you the difference we'll, we'll copy this 
And now that we have this, let's go ahead and change this back to default. And then we'll go back to the sequencer tab. Let's go ahead and put a, another timing mark down here. And we'll put a, right here under test one, this is our second one, we'll put a bars effect there. And now you see it's not acting the, the other way because X Lights is seeing this as a single straight line. The buffer, now I don't know if this is going to show up correctly or not. You, well, it, it, and it does. Uh, this is what X Lights now sees as the buffer for that submodel. It sees it as a line that goes from left over to the right. And the reason it does this is because it's lining up the pixels either in the direction that X Lights deemed was necessary or the order at which you selected those pixels to go in. Now, this is a very fundamental understanding when you create submodels in your own props. What's a little bit more challenging is that whenever you download props, some of the props may not have may not have may not have taken this into consideration and this is why I wanted to share with you the anatomy of trying to understand the submodel. So, when you understand that selection of the pixels matters, then if we go back here and we wanted to create a very specific submodel, uh, and again, you could you could it could be anything. You, you could come over here with submodel we'll say uh, uh, test three right and we got what we could do is we could start here and I'll just start with a selection of uh, pixels I and I'm just making just a diamond pattern right and there we go whoop and if you screw up you hold the shift key down and drag I meant to go over here and reselect it there and then I'll just keep going in a little diamond circle I guess if that's what you call it there we go we got ourselves a submodel it's built relatively uh, with a definite circular pattern in mind we click OK and we save and now let's go back in here we can see test 3 let's go ahead and add another timing mark and let's put the um, the single strand effect on this so now if we and we go, we're gonna have to stretch this out so nice and long, chase size, make this a little bit longer. Maybe not so long, there we go. But you can see it going in that circle pattern that's built now into your matrix. And it's it's giving X lights the direction or the path in which you want the effect to take. Now you also just learned that if you wanted it to uh, X lights to treat it as just a basic model, something that you could throw into the rest of your show, then all you had to do was come in here, select it, copy it, come up here again, change the buffer style to keep XY, and now we click OK, we'll save it again, we'll go back in here, we'll add another timing mark, and we'll put the single strand effect over this, and you'll see, if we make this a little thicker, uh, maybe a little shorter too, you'll see that it's treating it just like it is a regular Coro prop or any other custom model that you might have created, and it's all because of the keep XY function. So, now that you understand that, now that we have a baseline of where this is important, now what we want to do is we want to look at some of the submodels that you might find in some other props. Now, here is our PPD wreath. Now, a lot of care was put into creating these, specifically like these spirals that you see here, uh, or the, uh, the stars. They're all, the pixels are all selected in a very, very specific order. And that's important because whenever you take these effects and maybe you're mapping them to say something like this here, this is the showstopper wreath. And if you're trying to map, let's say something from the PPD wreath, you're also going to want to find a like set of submodels that are built into the uh, showstopper uh, flake, for example. Now, if, if, you go in and you open up some of these, you'll see, oh look, here's a snowflake. If you have arms on there that looks like snowflake arms, you could map snowflake arms from the, the a snowflake arm group. You could uh, come down here, let's see what else we have. We have a uh, spinning diamonds, you could make those are arms. Let's see, you have some outer leaves here. 
And what you might do with some of these outer leaves is you might consider that those would be something similar to uh, the spirals or the petals. These little petals here, if you open this up, you can see each one of these little petals there. It goes around the uh, outside. So you can you can open up and look at some of these different submodels and you can start saying well this sub set of submodels is like this and then you can go in and you can put those items into one group and apply the effects from your mapping for example from the petals like here if we if we were to let's let's try rotating outer leaves let's uh, let's go in and add add selection to existing group the PPD petals group now why is this important well we'll go over here and we'll show you so let's go over here and grab the single strand effect and place it on the PPD wreath uh, petals group because we added the submodel for the outer outer loop or outer leaves there they're they're similar right so if we put them on there and we go you see what happens it's taking the effect and it's doing just like we said even though these are built a specific way because we're now in a group we're not in on the individual submodel level here now what we'll do is we'll change the render style to per model default which is identical to this right here okay it's per model default on the XY one versus per model default going through the path that we set it out to be and look what happens when we do this so if you map an effect from let's say the PPD wreath petals and you apply them to the outer leaves for the the showstopper wreath you're going to get some interesting things so let's let's go ahead and play with some more we'll go over here to the layout and we'll select this one all right we'll scroll down here let's go find the one that says spinner so I know this isn't a spinner well the PPD wreath has a spirals we call them spiral clockwise and spiral counterclockwise so if there were something similar to which that we could apply the same effects to I think that we could find that here in what's already been created which is kinda interesting uh, we have spinners so spinners would be something that I would consider to be uh, all of them but you also have even spinners and odd spinners so what if we put the even spinners inside the uh, add selection to existing group the PPD spiral clockwise see or uh, the bottom one here and we'll we'll grab the odd spinners and we'll put those in the counterclockwise group that is right here spiral counterclockwise and then because he has uh, the, the the model has been set up ahead of time you could go to the spinner group and you could right click and add this because the spinners that's all of them in there that's all the arms uh, we can add this to the PPD wreath spiral all since it's got them all together so let's go ahead and try going in and putting a single strand effect onto let's say this spiral clockwise uh, right there and as you see it goes across the group there it's going straight across the group and if we change our render style now render styles are a little bit more fussy whenever you apply them you, you can see it's going left to right but the difference is is that the effect is being applied to a group and so in order to have it travel along our predetermined path what we need to do is we need to change the render style to something like per model default so here you can see it's doing something uh, similar. Now, what do you notice about the uh, the showstopper flake versus the PPD spinner, uh, or the spiral? Uh, you notice that they're they're working slightly different. So here's another piece of the anatomy of submodels that you need to be aware of. If we go back into our layout and we click on the uh, showstopper model, let's go in and look at the uh, submodels here and if we go to the spinner let's go to the spinner uh, odd spinners what you'll notice is uh, sometimes you can build a spinner with a vertical buffer layout and what it did was it changed the way that the effect is rendered on the um, on the model depending on who you're buying your sequences from or who's created the sequence people sequence differently so if this vertical buffer is checked uh, then what it happens to do is it flips the buffer 
vertically and effects are applied differently to it. So there's a fix for this. I just showed you that you can copy a submodel group or a submodel. You can copy this and here you can change this from, remember how we changed this to keep XY, we can remove the vertical buffer out of it. Now I'm going to leave this alone. I'm actually going to change the one that's in there because uh, I don't want to change all the groups around. That'll take some time. But if we go in and we change these vertical buffers and we change this spinner here from a vertical buffer and we click OK and we save and we go back into the sequence tab and we come in here and click the model now look what happens to the effects that you see rendered on your screen so here you can see that it gets a little bit challenging whenever you go from one person's model to another person's model and applying the effects now you can tell that if you go in and you look at the individual submodels and see if some of those settings are checked or turned on then you have a way to go back copy duplicate change or rearrange them just so that they work specifically for your use case all right guys i know this video was a little bit longer than what you expected but the the lessons with submodels runs really really deep there's a lot of things that go into, there's a lot of time that goes into putting submodels together. Uh, nothing, nothing says hard work more than sitting in front of the computer, clicking and dragging and selecting all of those pixels just to make the effects run a certain way. And then the sequencer in the end is the one who is creating from the way that they know how to create. Different sequencers are going to do different things and in different ways. And if you understand that some sequencers will do this and other sequencers will do this, and if you take the time to work hard and figure out what looks the best for you, I promise you won't be sorry because it's a lot of hard work and it is very rewarding to see some awesome creations. All right, guys, that's everything from me here at Pixel Pro Displays. If you like the video, please give us a huge thumbs up. If you haven't done yet, so please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications so you never miss a Twinkle Tip Friday video. Now, if you want a cool t-shirt just like this, go to pixelprodisplays.com, click on our store, go to our gear, and there are two shirts for you to choose from over there. And finally, if you love the things we do here and you want to support us here at Pixel Pro Displays, consider joining the PPD Sequence Club where we do one brand new to the store awesome sequence each and every month this month there's two and you can choose from one of three different songs that are going to be in the store each month and then at the beginning of the next month you get another song to choose from also if you like the other songs that are already in there just come back after you make your first selection and check out come back and pick out the other two and you get 50 percent off it's a hell of a deal if you are looking to build a library of great sequences with lots of effects and very good sequencing consider joining the ppd sequence club guys thank you for joining me it really is great having you here if you have any comments please put them in the comment section down below any suggestions are much appreciated and as always thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now. Now there's an anatomy to the to the to the base there's Stay tuned. Let's look